So I want to welcome you all here today. My name is Patricia Alkling. I teach um, biology, so I'm faculty in biology, and I want to what, welcome you to our Spectrum Faculty Lecture Series today. We are having a lecture done by John Foster, who is faculty in English, and he will be talking about male art. John went to UNC Wilmington for his bachelor's and his master's in English. So he's been kind of in a couple of different areas of the state, but in the male art, I think he gets kind of worldwide. So hopefully you all will be <coughs> his talk. Uh, hey, um, what's happening? A uh, couple things, uh, just to ask questions as we go. I don't have this one down pat, you know, like the, you know, if you're talking about topic sentences, you just kind of fall asleep as you're going through it after 13 years. So I'm going to miss stuff because I don't do this very often. So just ask as we go because I'll miss something or something will be confusing or I'll talk too fast or I'll make mention of something ridiculous. So just yell it out as we go. Uh, I've got a PowerPoint. PowerPoints are awful, right? They take away hope and joy. Uh, there's, th there's never been a good one. They're awful. They're terrible. They make you realize the futility of everything. I hate them. I really do. That's why the little thing is there. But of course, it's a placeholder. So I'm going to use that just as sort of a jumping off point to talk about this thing. Uh, I'll come off and on it, but you know, I do apologize for its existence, which is maybe not good right before you start to use it. Okay. All right. And then don't let me forget to talk about these things here as well. Uh, and then come and look at them or look through them later. Okay. Excellent. All right, let's do this first slide to this thing that I just said I hated, right? Okay, so uh, when we talk about this male art thing, it is a, a global phenomenon. Uh, I highlighted these folks here. Um, I highlighted these folks here just because they're people uh, that I regularly correspond with, right? People use correspond uh, interchangeably with sending male art. Um, so it really is a global phenomenon. Um, uh, one of my favorite male artists on earth is Karina Gronlin. She lives in Petsmo, Finland. Nobody's ever heard of Petsmo, Finland. Uh, if you Google it, it looks like you would imagine, you know, there's like all oh, some sort of deep red building by a glacier pond and everything looks damp and, you know, people in sweaters. Um, so even if it's just sort of uh, finding a new place, it's kind of interesting to exchange with those folks. Uh, Kim Jong-un uh, in Seoul, South Korea. Visma Bruins in Wait Pinga, Australia. I guess that's how you say it. Um, it's, it's kind of right on the coast. It's not exactly right there. Um, fascinating place. Not a lot of people around. Uh, and Viviana, um, I can't remember her last name is in Argentina. The reason I chose those is just, well, they're about as far away as you can possibly get. Obviously, there's people exchanging these sorts of things all through the United States and all through, you know, sort of Western Europe, some into Eastern Europe. Obviously, places with expendable money uh, where they probably have too much, you're more inclined to spend on postage to mail things that you made in your spare time if you're not looking for clean water. So, uh, relative wealth is obviously involved. Most of Western Europe, uh, quite a few places in South America, dots through um, Africa, and especially Japan is a really hot bit. Only a couple things in India. To define what this really is, there's kind of two paths you can take if you're interested in the art history of it. There's kind of two paths. You have this sort of Ray Johnson path, which we're going to talk about in a second, and you have this sort of fluxus path. Uh, both sort of culminate in New York, sort of, uh, in the 1960s and 70s. Uh, the short, short interpretation really is you make something and you mail it to people. Really, that's it. You make something and you mail it to people. Now, uh, the in and outs of that is, well, a little more, hmm, a little more naughty, but that's really it. Uh, here's some places that I've sent to. Uh, this is an older list. I've used this to, to talk about this sort of thing before. So it's an older list. I could add to this. Uh, quite a few of these people I've sent to, or people representing these countries, I've sent to for years and years and years, years and years and years. Um, 
This right here is a selection of things I've received in the past couple of weeks. I'm good at uh, organizing things, so I put it in a specific pile. So what I did was I just went last night and just grabbed a bunch of it. Um, and if I look here, here's Oakland. That's not too exotic, I guess, unless you live in San Francisco. Um, Island there, Stefano Pasquini, which is also a wonderful name to stay, uh, lives in Italy, if you would be so bold. Uh, Minnesota, you know. Uh, here's Germany. Uh, these are just ones that I got. Uh, Calgary, Alberta, woo! Uh, Louisiana. So these are just things that I've received recently. Uh, these are some of the places that I've gotten things across the world from. Uh, some of which I've corresponded with for uh, close to a decade. But anyway, yeah, what do you got? Good question! Yes, and I have. Um, uh, there's a couple of folks that are sort of uh, locally. There's, um, there's this OG kind of guy, his name's Richard Kennard. He was part of the Ray Johnson School in the 60s and 70s, the New York Correspondence School, as it were. Ironically, maybe it's not ironic, does this work? Ironically, he's from Thomasville? I, I don't know. It may be. Nobody knows That's what irony probably. means. So, well, nobody knows. Effect, affect, just don't use it. Uh, his name is Richard. His handle is Richard Kennard. His real name is Richard Craven. Lots of people have aliases or sort of fake names and identities they construct. I've sent to people for years and I don't know if they're male, female, 90 years old, or two weeks old. Um, I've met him multiple times and gone through his archive before. I'll show you my blog where I describe that. Um, He's kind of an OG guy, he's 76. He actually grew up in Thomasville, but then uh, worked for Sika and uh, lives in uh, Illinois now. But he grew up on Green Street, strangely enough, which is parallel to Maine, if you're getting off the highway here. Um, I met him, I've met this uh, woman from South Carolina. Um, when I was in Hungary, I went and met up with some people. Uh, Hungary, the Hungary, not as in the feeling. Um, I met up with some people there. Uh, they were doing stuff behind sort of, you know, the, the, the communist uh, <laughs> blockade uh, all through the 60s and 70s and had one of the best days of my life talking with folks there. Um, I'm going to <clears throat> Greece and Italy pretty soon uh, and I'm going to meet up with someone in Greece that I've sent things to for years. So yes, strangely enough, more outside of the country than in. Just a couple folks from the U.S. It's mostly just about sending. You can kind of connect in that way. Good question. Did that answer it at all? Yeah. All right. Uh, here's kind of our paths here. Like I said, you can either kind of trace the movement, art histor historically speaking, uh, either through Ray Johnson or through, who also has a North Carolina connection, uh, either through Ray Johnson or through um, the Fluxus movement, Ken Friedman, uh, the guy from Lithuania, George McCunius. Um, you can trying to trace it through them. For me, it's through Ray Johnson, basically because this movie. There's a movie out there. If you want to have any sort of inspiration about getting involved in anything similar to this, there's this movie, maybe kind of hard to find. It's a documentary. It's about his life. It's called How to Draw a Bunny. Um, I try and tell people to go check that out as often as I possibly can. It's a wonderful inspiration. It's about this dude. It traces his life and his work and all this stuff. So that's how I kind of came into the whole thing. It's through that documentary. So at about eh, 12 years ago, right after it came out, uh, sent a few things and then fell off and then for some reason watched it again and then haven't let up at all uh, since getting back into it. Um, yeah, he's uh, originally from the Detroit area, becomes uh, uh, trained uh, under like Joseph Albers and, and all those cats at Black Mountain College in the late 50s and early 60s. If you don't know anything about Black Mountain College, um, it was in Black Mountain as in North Carolina. Parts kind of became what is Warren <laughs> Wilson. He trains there, uh, avant-garde, no grades, imagine that deep in the cut North Carolina, hyper avant-garde art school with no grades. 
outside of Asheville. It's kind of ridiculous. Uh, but he trains there, moves to New York, gets mildly acquainted with uh, the sort of Andy Warhol crowd. He's good friends with um, Dorothy uh, Podberg, who infamously liked to walk her ocelot around uh, through the New York streets, was mildly acquainted with Valerie Stellanis, who shot Andy Warhol. You know, f fun folks you know, people to invite to a party. So he's kind of part of that group. Uh, in there, he starts, well, quite honestly, getting a Rolodex of addresses where he would make collages, right, all types of different things, uh, would make collages and then mail them to his friends, right? Sometimes they would come with instructions. Sometimes they'd be, hey, here's this thing. Connection here. Here's this thing. Add something to it and pass it to so and so, right? So this could be an activity that you guys could engage in, right? You send your friend uh, Jessica uh, a piece of paper that's half drawn, right? And then you say, Jessica, finish this picture and then mail it to Jessica too and then mail it back home, right? So you start to get a network. You have this artificial network of people mailing things to one another, right? The longer that goes, or if people play along, it can travel thousands and thousands of miles, a piece of paper, a piece of cardboard, whatever you send. So he would have instructions like that. Uh, this piece here, this collage thing here, this is infamous, infamously uh, something he made. It was massive. And what he did was he couldn't sell it, so he just cut it up, put addresses on it, and mailed it to people, right? Just mailed it. If we look here, here's something. Where's this from? Uh, España. That's Spain. <laughs> okay. Uh, Antonio Mayo Castello. Castello. Uh, yeah, so she sent me this. No instructions, right? So this is just for something to me uh, that I'll keep. Uh, she has some information on here, uh, and then I'll get it, and then I'll reply to her, right? So then your network gets larger and larger and larger. What do you got? As much as humanly possible. And then I take on more projects. Uh, me, personally, uh, quite a few hours, uh, mostly Saturdays and Sundays, and then uh, whenever I can at nights. Uh, so last night a guy uh, wanted me to, to work on this record layout for him and he wanted collages on it. So he came over, we talked about it, started to work on those wherever I can, really. Uh, some of these things are printed in mass, so a lot of it is more clerical stuff, just putting things in envelopes and then addresses. Some things are more intensive uh, that I make that are actually, um, you know, distinctly different pieces. Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter. Well, you could kind of lose it. It may be easier to come up and take a look, but here, here's a couple pieces. Just make sure the stuff goes back in the envelope. Here's a couple. You can take a look at more. Just pass them around. They're not precious. That's the idea. So as much time as I possibly can. What do you got? How do you meet people? Like, how do you start out? Ah, I think that's the next slide. Let's see. Look at that. No, no, no. Good. Yeah, wait, well, no, it's not the next slide. So I'll upend, I'll upend, no. Uh, there's a couple, uh, couple things. The joy of the, uh, you know, the interwebs, there are tons of places where people uh, share their addresses and things that they want to do, right? So FaceSpace is a good place to, to kind of find those people. There's lots of specific groups. If you go uh, to Face Space and then you search for mail art, you'll come up with a bunch of groups. A lot of those will share addresses as well as their work. Um, the biggest one that I used or the one I started with uh, was called the International Union of Mail Artists. Um, that is a Ning site. So if you're so inclined, you can search I-U-O-M-A. Uh, and it'll come up with this Ning site, which is basically kind of um, a social network. You set up a profile, people share their addresses, you go get their addresses, and you mail to people who are inclined to send such stuff. International Union of Mail Artists. Um, and then, you know, you can put your name out there, you can share things through that site, or you can do it through Facebook. It does go back and forth between the two. I use both of them. I use both of them. She had you in the back. Yes, ma'am? I have both. I just started a P.O. Box. Um, 
I've done my home address for about 10 years. That's been fine. Uh, if you're not comfortable with that, then set one up. You can get one in Lexington for 80, I think it's $84 for 13 months. Um, I just set one of those up because I wanted to send to complete strangers. So I'm just sending to weird iconic places across the US. I'm sending to, you know, uh, the museum in Iowa has a big Dada archive. I'm gonna send something to them. I uh, sent something to the White House. I sent something to an infamous uh, hot dog stand in LA called Pink's. Um, maybe they respond, maybe they don't. If not, I'm out 50, 60 cents. If they do, it's a thrill. If they don't, oh well. She got you. Yeah, Facebook, there's tons of groups there. If you just search. I, said face -based. I use face space. I don't know. I use these. Yeah, I'm just trying to be funny. It doesn't work. It never works in class. It doesn't work here. It's a feeble attempt at best. I'm sorry. What do you got? Uh, basically any of the, I do collaborative books, which are exactly what they sound. So you go onto one of those platforms, whether it's the International Union or a, a Facebook group, uh, and you say, hey, I have this book. And when I'm talking a literal book that's this big. I didn't bring any of those. I apologize. I'll show you some up here in a second. Uh, and you just send it to people who say they're interested, uh, and they add whatever they're going to add, and then they mail it to the next person that they were either instructed to mail it to or whoever they want. Uh, so when those come back, sometimes they'll take a year, maybe two years. Uh, when they come back, those are always more impressive because you have, you know, page after page, big um, uh, uh, things made from people all over the world. They'll throw in extra people. Those are generally the most exciting to get back from folks, um, for sure. Here's this. Um, this woman, uh, Jenny Hinchcliffe, she's kind of one of the, I don't know, she's kind of one of the rock stars. For some reason, she never responds, which is ironic. That is ironic, right? Because of her rules. Um, so she never responds. I don't know why. There's like two people that won't respond. There's this woman named Anna Banana <laughs> and, um, and uh, uh, Canada, and then her. I can't get either one of those to respond. Uh, she stops, she also has a, this blog called uh, Red Letter Day, which is a Get Up Kids song, which I cannot get out of my head whenever I say that, if you know what that band is. Yay! Um, here are her rules. The good thing is there really aren't any to highlight any of those. Um, to highlight any of those, it's really about um, it's really about responding when people send you something, right? So if someone mails you something, you send some sort of response. Uh, the rule that she sets up here is well, you either say hey I got it, which nobody really cares for, or you make something and you then you mail it to them. Um, I think that's the only rule that really matters. The money thing, I've had that uh, happen before. Uh, I've curated shows where I'll have people to, to respond to thing in themes. I did one, um, did one out of this guy's face, making fun of this dude I know, uh, and then had people all over the world to send in um, images using his face, some more graphic than, I wanted um, and then did some political stuff with Trump's thing uh, so I have his visage sort of <laughs> so I have lots of theme shows that I've um, actually put together and shown in mass uh, before in art galleries or stereo stores um, so obviously you can't sell those things um, yeah if you send to shows there's shows all the time I've been in shows this is my favorite one is where people ask uh, to send for a show uh, and they sent evidence that uh, um, that it had gone down and it was a shed in the Ukraine I'm not joking. It was a shed in the Ukraine. Uh, they sent pictures of the outside and then they had the stuff on this cinder block wall. But like the, the, the shed uh, had like really tall grass leading up to it. It had a nice patina on it. It just looked like a shed. They keep some sort of farm equipment in there. And then they showed of the video. They opened the door and all the artwork was on the walls. And as they kind of panned around, I saw something I made in the corner. That's cool, right? Something that you can make can end up in a shed in the Ukraine. <laughs> I can't pronounce the name of the place, but you know, it was in the Ukraine. Um, 
give as good as you get and document. I'll show you my documentation process. I have a blog where I write a bunch of stuff nobody cares about uh, and then move that around. Uh, mostly, or at least the, the more interesting of the stuff that anybody's ever interested, if they ever are, about what I make, uh, I do this thing, which is really simple and I just stumbled across it, but it's kind of my go-to with making collages. I mainly just make collages, mainly, that's where I spend most of my time. Uh, and it's kind of a collage, day collage sort of thing in a way, even though you're choosing what you want to rip. Uh, for me, um, it's kind of this tape rip method thing. So most of the things I make are based out of this <coughs> in that uh, if we take a look at this picture here, uh, all of these textures are different things added to a piece of heavy cardboard. Uh, this would come from an old magazine. This is just my own thing. This is not something most people or anybody really does. This comes from a magazine, right? The older the magazine, the better. The paper is cheaper, right? Uh, so the image <coughs> rips off of the paper better. High gloss magazines don't work. So if anybody has a store of magazines from the 60s or 70s or early 80s, let me know. I'll come nab them from your shed. Um, <laughs> these are bits of tape. This is just straight up duct tape, uh, some other red tape on top. Basically, I just uh, put the piece of tape down uh, on the paper and then rip it up like that uh, and then add it over and over and over to the composition. This would have been a postcard, so this would have been this big, sort of been this big scanned. Put on the wall, looks more impressive. Uh, so each one of these is a different thing of tape. This came from a magazine. You can just see the letters. Uh, and it kind of creates um, an interesting composition. <laughs> sometimes there's figures, often there's figures in them. Uh, sometimes they're completely abstract. I like color. I like a lot of color. So often they kind of look like that. Do you go with certain things? Uh, depends. Uh, depends. Sometimes they develop. Sometimes they're intentional. Uh, for some of the shows, the shows sometimes are themed. So it's, hey, send me a, um, send a, a postcard to this show that's just about um, ficus. Right? So you send a card on the theme of ficus. Sometimes they're even more random than that. That's uh, just kind of what I saw. Um, it just depends. I like figures and faces. I like old images. And then I like to switch out the, 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 the captions and the phrases underneath them to say something it completely didn't intend to say. This is more of an abstract one. No. Yeah. Do you have to have talent? I mean, you have to no. do, but oh. you don't have to. No, I think it's, I don't. And I don't think, I don't think you do. I mean, the idea is that it's kind of, um, it's very supportive. It's very, um, you know, it's more about making your own thing than it is making something that's great. I don't care if I receive great things for a long time. I never made a great or interesting thing. I don't see necessarily think that I do now. It's more about making your own noise, having an idea and seeing it come to fruition, creating a community out of that, and that's pretty much it. The idea is that, well, there's not really much money involved, right? You're not changing, the money isn't changing hands. Uh, there isn't a curatorial process, meaning there isn't someone judging what you make if you send to a uh, show somewhere. <clears throat> so it's kind of outside of that realm, as pretentious it is. So necessarily being good or bad, no one really cares, right? Stuff that I've sent before uh, or send often, uh, I don't necessarily like, but it doesn't matter. That's what they made. Uh, this person here, Elke Grundman in Berlin, this is that thing I shared to you, uh, just stuff she found on the street, and it's amazing, and it looks like, you know, sort of 1920s typography stuff, um, and being that it's from Berlin and has that sort of feel to it, it has a, uh, a feel to it that may be a bit weighted and misguided from our own American perspective, but nonetheless, um, whether it's good or not, doesn't matter. I particularly like the stuff she makes. What's up? Uh, a lot of uh, add and passes. Good segue. So I do segues as well. That wasn't the right word, was it? I do uh, add and passes as well. Here are some of mine. I just nabbed uh, a book. Um, I've done hundreds of these in which I print off a blank sheet of paper. Here's one. Print off a brick blank sheet of paper. Here's one with my ugly face on it. Um, 
uh, print off a blank sheet of paper that has my address on it and says add in pass, which is exactly that. Find somebody through the network. Hey, uh, let's mail to Massimo Modello in Italy. He's in Bologna. All right, so I send to that person, add and pass. So they add something to it, maybe that sticker, maybe this dude here, I don't know, and then they move it to someone else. So at some point it'll come back to me, maybe, maybe 50% of the time. Sometimes they just get left on someone's desk, right? So this piece of paper here has been to, uh, it's been to San Francisco, it's been to multiple people in Italy. Uh, this one here, which is, this one's kind of funny, because this is one, uh, I took a picture, there's a taco place in Lexington, across from the library. Anybody go there? Lapitas. Yes, Lapitas, muy bueno, right? Okay, so everybody, if you don't go to Lapita, Lapitas in Lexington, across from the library, you probably should. But, okay, outside, I actually mailed them a copy of this, by the way. Um, they never respond. Um, so, uh, what this is, is just a monochrome picture out front when you walk in the side, on the left side of the door. Uh, there's just a, uh, it looks like cable, like coax, that's just been circled. So I took a picture of that. I don't know why. And then, um, uh, <laughs> and then put some directions on the bottom that basically just says, why are they on the back? No, nope, they're on the bottom. Uh, that says, this is an add and pass, move it on. So then someone, I mailed it to people. They added things to it. In this case, this is, uh, it got to Canada. This is Kurt uh, Ballou, Ballou, I don't know, in Canada. Uh, this, is, uh, this is in Texas. This blue stuff is um, this woman in Greece, the woman I'm actually going to see. Uh, and then they mailed it back to me. Same thing here. People just add stuff. This is a picture up front of um, uh, Tudaji Temple in Nara, Japan. It's like, whew a big deal for me. So outside in front of the bus there was this weird thing on the concrete. There was uh, an outline of a man holding a child's outline weeble arm. It was creepy and I liked that it. it was from there and it was also on the ground so it looked like a chalk outline in like a 1970s cop show where someone got murdered. Just follow me. Uh, so <laughs> so of course I took a picture of it, monochromed it, and then mailed it about, uh, <laughs> mailed it to folks, and I even put found in Nara, Japan up here. Uh, so this has been to, that's, I know her, that's Mars, Tokyo, and um, uh, Virginia, it went to Ed in Washington, it went to WC in the UK, and Fripps in Vienna. So I took the picture in Japan, I printed off uh, in Winston, <laughs> uh, I then mailed it, and then it went to uh, Maryland, Washington, Vienna, UK before coming back. So <clears throat> uh, sometimes I trace the miles that it took to get there. So this has traveled, which is irresponsible, globally speaking, but oops. Um, so this has traveled thousands and thousands of miles, especially to look like trash to most people. So. Um, I do these a lot. Here's one with a camel smoking ad from the 20s. Once again, here's my ugly face. Uh, so I have a bunch of these. My, uh, the one I, uh, that gets around the most is this uh, 4 by 4 thing. I found this in a thrift store. Some kid drew this. It's E.T. Um, the most famous one I had is, or the one that gets used the most is these four squares. So there's four blank squares, mail it to people, add something to the square, move it to somebody else. So when they come back, there's four different squares filled. I have hundreds of those. Well, not hundreds. Multiple dozens? Dozens? Does that answer a question? I don't know how I got there. Yeah, sure. How long did it take you? Oh, I'm sorry. What do you got? How long did it take you to get it back? Uh, some, uh, some take months and months and months, some maybe years, uh, it just depends. Some could be weeks. I got one that I forgot that I did. It was the first one I ever did, and I just got one back uh, a couple months ago. Uh, my address actually changed, and someone changed my address, right? So, like, it was 707 Watson Avenue, and they're like, oh, we got to change it. So then they changed it. It had been gone so long, and I've lived at that house for two years now. So uh, it took years. Probably just got stuck on someone's desk, sat there for three months. They sent it to someone. Someone was like, eh, we'll leave it here for three months, so on and so forth. Yeah. 
Yeah. Do you put dates on the stuff that you send? Sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes not. Uh, sometimes people will do that. It really just depends. Um, some people are really into documenting every little thing. Um, I don't do that as much because the more your clerical work you get into, the more of documenting, the more of scanning, the more of posting, the less time you're actually doing making anything. So at some point, if you're really into that, you're taken away from making. And if the idea is to make and build community and not be, you know, um, scanning all the time, you kind of have to go, eh, I won't put a date on this. I won't scan this. I'll move this along without adding something to it. All right, here's this thing. Um, yeah, the, this, the Ning site there is probably the most user-friendly to get a feeling. There's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of information out there through it. Uh, each, um, 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 each month there's someone that is kind of the liaison. So if you set up an account, if you set up an account, someone will probably send you a message directly. Uh, someone that's been involved maybe for 20 or 30 years. There's a lot of information on that site. If you're inclined to make something and send something, you should go there first to get a bearing, right? I have a profile there. There's an address on it. If you send me something, I'll mail you back. Um, so yeah, lots of information there. Go there first if you have an interest. Facebook is a little harder because it's harder to find addresses. There's not as much of a sense of community. It's mostly people sharing uh, projects that they're working on or things they've done in the past. So there's not as much context. Here there's a lot of context. You can search by country. Um, you can really see what's going on. Uh, if you do a straight Google search of mail art as a thing, uh, it gets kind of in the weeds pretty quickly. That's part of the problem with having um, having an art-centered movement that doesn't really have a center, right? If no one's in charge, if there are no rules, then there's nothing holding it together. So it's hard to find a, a center to stuff online. It's kind of all over the place. Some of it is intentionally um, difficult to follow. So, uh, Google search not great. YouTube, there's not a lot of great mail art centered stuff out there. If you want to get a feel, search YouTube for Ray Johnson and he'll be the easiest. Or uh, Fluxus, F-L-U-X-U-S. I didn't spell a curse word, did I? No. All right. Cool. Stamps! It's cheap, relatively, right? If you have a small, uh, uh, if you have a small uh, network that you're sending to, that it's only 50 cents, which just went up two weeks ago from 49. Uh, uh, if you just send to a small amount of people and they're in the United States, then you're only sending 50 cents at a time, uh, including the cost of whatever it is you make, and then you end up with artwork from around the world and potentially people that um, you may have some connection with. Relatively cheap postcard based on size and weight uh, is 35 cents. Um, uh, forever global forever is 115, which strange. Our postal rates are terrible whenever you get into packages, like awful, like prohibitively expensive. Uh, but an actual, but an actual, um, you know, letter or something in uh, this size of envelope is 115, which is relatively cheap for the rest of the world. Sending a postcard from Italy was. 220 euro, um, which is quite a bit more. So it's relatively cheap. You put a stamp on it, you put the address, and you mail it to whoever you're engaged with. <clears throat> right, I do have, I do want to show you this one other thing, and then I'll have some more questions. I do have some kits here, if you're so inclined. Uh, they have a bunch of broadsides. The broadsides are just uh, weird printed things that I've made, collages, analog collages that I've made. Um, um, there's some of those in there. There's stickers that I've made. Uh, there's add and passes. There's an add and return in there. Uh, the address in here is the P.O. box that I just started, so if it freaks you out to mail me something directly, you're sending to a P.O. box in Lexington. So that's not as bad. If you send something to me, I will respond to you. I have seven of these. I don't want these to go back to my house because the top of my house is nothing but paper and weird stuff I've bought in thrift stores. So this is uh, hoping to uh, 
well, lessen the effects of a fire hazard. So make sure you somebody take these. If I run out of these, if I run out of these, just let me know uh, and I'll bring some more um, as soon as I get them. Okay, um, other thing, I want to say something about this. These are stamps. People like making stamps. There's obviously uh, a bit of people or quite a few people that make their own stamps. The really fun folks try and uh, pass them off as real postage. So those are kind of a treat. And of course, it's a, definitely a crime. But, uh, <laughs> but it's a fun crime, right? There are crimes that are... There are Crimes that are less fun than others, but passing off a stamp uh, as a real stamp and that being called a crime, wow, you're not the same kind of criminal as other types of criminals. You're definitely on the lower echelon there. You're the Jean Valjean of awful crimes. So, yeah, yeah. so people will make these. Sometimes they try and pass them off. Uh, they do perforate them like this, so you can, and most of them are done on sticky paper on the back here, uh, so you can lick them and stick them to uh, an envelope. A lot of people do that, so they add their own stamps. Uh, people do the add and passes, people do collages, people do broad sheets, uh, people send really weird things. A lot of people are interested in testing the mail, so they'll, um, they'll see what they can send, and pretty much you can send anything, right? Whether it's a banana, people love sending bananas for some reason, so they'll just put the postage on the banana and then see how, um, see how much it deteriorates and whether people can get it in a hole, you get it back as a, a whole banana once it gets to your house, which is an artwork. It's nice that data quality because it uh, does completely disintegrate, right? So by the time it gets to you, the thing that someone sent you and spent money on, you're going to throw away which is great, right? It's art that destroys itself. Uh, so you get some real nut jobs in that way in the best sense. Um, yeah, there's this guy, Pedro Bearcat, that sends stuff from Spain. He just, um, he seals, he like factory seals, like sucks all the air out of this um, weird packaging stuff and he puts things in between it and then mails it that way. So sometimes there's like candy in there that sucked all the air, but the cool thing is, right, as it rots and the air gets to it, it changes, right? So it's an actual artwork that is evolving, that is moving, that is changing. It is a changing piece of art, right? It's great. A little gross if you think about it, but eh, totally worth it. What do you get? Um, I don't know. I don't know if there was necessarily anything strange. Uh, one of my favorites was there's this guy, Mike Dyer. He lives in um, uh, California somewhere. I can't remember. He's kind of an OG dude. Uh, I posted a picture of... Um, you were there. I posted a picture of uh, a plate of spaghetti that had fallen on the side of the street, right? So it was right in kind of like just right by the curb there. And I posted it just because it was so out of place. It was ridiculous. So then I, um, <laughs> so I took the picture, posted it online. I don't know how this guy got the image, but he got the image and then made a book out of the image that I took. Right, so he changed it up, he changed the colors, he changed the perspective, he flipped it, he put other images in it, and they just sent it to me. You can do that with your friends if you want to get started, right? Uh, if, say, your friends just buy, bought a house or moving into a house, Zillow or any of those things have tons. Maybe this is a little creepy, so only do it to your friends, really close friends. Um, uh, you can go online, get pictures of their house they're moving into, and then send them pictures of their new house with descriptions of what you would do inside of it, right? So <laughs> my friends in California bought a house in Sunland and almost called fire, the Sunland should have been a key. Um, but so they bought a house in Sunland, California, and of course I got the address very quickly. Uh, she sends me the address, and then I have <laughs> the whole house laid out in front of me online. So of course, I then describe exactly what they should do here, what they should put here. And then you just mail it to them, right? And then they pull it up, and there is their kitchen with the description, you should put the toaster to the left of the window. It's creepy and also really fun. Only do that to your friends. Only do that to your friends. Or you can you know, take a picture, get their picture of the outside of the house, and then just superimpose yourself, give them a thumbs up, mail that to them. That always, especially if they live far away. There's all kinds of weird pranks you can do, right? It's, it's fun, silly, costs you 50 cents, takes you 10 minutes. Do it at work when people aren't 
constantly emailing you questions about due dates, right? <laughs> yeah, you don't have that. What do you got? Um, what's like the Uh, this basically, there's three people that I uh, admire immensely and uh, steal from all the time. Uh, one of them is the lady in in, um, in um, Finland, uh, Karina Gronlin. She does amazing stuff. I have framed a lot of her things. Uh, there's this guy, Alan uh, Beely, uh, who lives in New York. He is phenomenal. He's been doing it since the 70s. Um, everything he does is phenomenal. I have some of his stuff framed. And there's this woman, uh, Susanna Lochner. She's Hungarian, but lives in uh, Germany. Uh, and she does amazing things. We actually did a collaborative piece that was in a museum and or a show in Stuttgart two weeks ago. Um, amazing stuff. Anything they do are just phenomenal. And I just constantly steal from whatever they send me. What do you got? Uh, Alan Beely. Alan. A-L-L-A-N B-E-A-L-Y. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I can remember his address out of hundreds. It's on 3rd Street. You can find it online. All right, I don't want it to go too much longer. I do want to show you very briefly my thing here since we're... If you're so inclined, this is a, a bunch of... Uh, uh, this has a bunch of my garbage on it. That's not right. I don't know. I missed a T. Isn't that the worst? Okay, uh, so I post, there's the, my mailbox in Lexington, send me to that. If you want to send to that, you can. There it is. That's my alias I go by, because John Wayne is funny to me. Um, yeah, here's a bunch of stuff that I write. So I write constantly. Uh, here's a bunch of collages I had at a show in, uh, these are tape rep collages that a show I had in, uh, at Aperture Cinema in Winston. Uh, here's my upstairs, that's music, that's my space up there. There's my mom, there's Alex Alejandro. Uh, so I write a lot about the things that I make here. So if you're so inclined, it's the John Foster.blogspot. I like sending pictures of myself that I blow up and give to my family and friends because it's very awkward when you give them a giant picture, right? It's like an obligation, right? If you give someone a picture and you're like, here, this is your present, but it's my ugly face, they have to think about that, right? They can't be like, this is garbage and then run a saber through it, right? because that would be bad on their part. So then they have to go and put it up somewhere. He called my bluff, that's my nephew, he called my bluff and he put it up in his room, which is even more horrifying. So, this is right before Christmas, so guess who got a lot of pictures of my face for Christmas? <laughs> called my bluff again, put them up like a creepy altar <laughs> around that that's the 16 by 20 I had that I had that printed on canvas I had multiple ones I would just give them to people whenever they bought a house I had multiple ones just printed up to give to people and make them feel uncomfortable he for some reason was okay oh here's the room yeah so I would just make him random ones and give them to him that just said horrible things and he put them up. This was before Christmas. So there's like twice that amount now. Uh, so if you're so inclined, there's a bunch of weird stuff there. I like messing with my face because why not? I can make fun of myself. So if you're inclined there, if you're interested in this, it's a very user site, user friendly site. Um, people post uh, things that they're getting up to the minute. The site is ran out of the Netherlands, which is kind of cool. Um, this is that Mike Dyer guy who took a picture of the thing. Katarina is the person we see in Greece. Uh, so you can find people's addresses. Uh, you can, you know, put up a profile. Uh, you can ask people questions. There's lots of subgroups. It's a nice community there. I'm sorry to run out of time. Questions. It's a lot. If you're interested, sign up there, set up a profile, ask people for their address, or just go and take one, and then mail them something, they'll get back to you. If you mail me something, I'll mail you back. 
Here are some of these. If you want to look at these, these stamps people make. Here's some more mail here if you want to rifle through it. If you have questions for me, great. Uh, I have these things. Please take these. You're reducing fire hazard. Do we have any questions? Well, you guys are kind of leeway there too quickly. If, all right. Thank you everyone for coming and thank you John for oh, yeah. this talk. If anybody else wants one of these, just leave me your name and I'll make you one and bring it next time. All right, ta-ta.